Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel for this video. This will be one of the first videos that I will make. Actually, the first video that I'm making with some products that I received through a Timu collaboration that I did last week. And I gotta tell you guys, these products are amazing. So I can't wait to show you what I figured out how to do with them and give you some hints. Now I used these flower molds. These are silicone flower molds, a couple different styles. And I just used white, bright white um, candy melts is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> bright white candy melts because I wanted to have the high contrast of black and white on this cake with a little touch of gold because that seems to be kind of my little calling card. I really like those contrasts. So what I did was I just melted the chocolate in 30 second intervals at 50% um, heat in the microwave until it was almost all the way melted and then I just stirred it until I got all the lumps smoothed out. And then I just put it in a bag and cut a small hole in the tip and just piped it into the different flowers that I wanted to make. Now with these thinner flower molds, the ones I'm using right now, you could also use fondant or gum paste. Um, for the, the deeper ones, I have not tried fondant or gum paste yet, but they are so detailed and so deep that I think that the chocolate is probably the best way to go. Now, I will probably try it with the other mediums too, but for this one, I just stuck with the chocolate. It seemed to be the easiest thing to do. And to make these, I wanted to make sure you get all those little nooks and crannies filled. So pipe right into the deepest parts of this mold. Um, not, don't fill them up all the way. Tap out the air bubbles and then add some more, kind of going around in a circle to get where the petals are first and then fill in the middle. And I just popped them into my freezer for about Oh, 15 minutes and just until they firm up it doesn't take long and then you just release them from the molds and you get these really really pretty flowers I especially like these I'm not exactly sure what they're called but there's so much detail in these absolutely gorgeous and if any of those petals happen to break off when you're releasing the mold you have to do this very slowly and intentionally and gently to get all of those petals but if they do happen to break off, you can just reheat them with like a torch or on a um, stove top with, with a pan, a saucepan or something, and just kind of melt it a little bit and then stick it back together. For this middle tier, it's just one single layer of cake. And I'm using a combination of buttercream and ganache, leftover ganache mixed together. It makes a chocolate buttercream to do my final coat of buttercream on that. And I just set it in the freezer to firm up so I could do another layer of buttercream. But in the meantime, I'm working on the top tier here. Um, this is a stencil that I also got on Timu. And of course, I'm gonna add all the links in the video description on where, um, the links for the specific specific products that I used. Um, and this is just, it's a like a cascading leaf uh, stencil. And what I did was I rolled out my fondant and I brushed a little bit of shortening on the back of the stencil, put it on the fondant, and smoothed it down to make sure that it was adhered to the fondant. You don't necessarily want the shortening where you're spraying the gold, but that's why I brushed it on the stencil, the back of the stencil, instead of the fondant. Then use an airbrush to airbrush the gold on there and just pull the mold off. And I set that to the side while I am getting my rosette mold ready here. This is for the middle small tier, middle short one. And this one, I honestly, I wasn't sure how this was gonna work because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in this. But what I found worked the best was not to roll out your fondant super thin. You want to have it on the thicker side. I know people don't, some people don't like fondant. I personally like it, but you wanna roll it not too thin. And you gotta really work it into those nooks and crannies after you have um, dusted it really well with cornstarch. Don't skimp on that because you will not release it. And then push it in. I probably worked on one of those for probably five minutes and then just pushing all that in there and then stick it in your freezer for a, a while so that they um, are firm enough to release easily. And in the meantime, I am covering my bottom tier in black fondant. I'm just using shortening. You could just spray it with, with water or you could use simple syrup if you prefer. I just like the, the shortening because um, you have a little wiggle room. 
Once you've stuck your fondant on, if you need to move it, you can just peel it off and re-situate it if you need to without it sticking and tearing. And this piece of fondant had set to the side for about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes before I lifted it on to, to, to the cake. When you're doing a wrap like that, I, my best advice is to let the panel sit for a little while. Since you're not worried about wrapping it around the edge and ripping and tearing, you don't have to worry about it so much. But you don't want to leave it too long either. So 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. And same with this bottom one here. I had let it, left it to the side to dry. And once I got those ready and done, that top tier is actually done. This is the middle tier. I had released the rosettes from the mold gently. What you do is you pull the silicone away from the sides. You know, this is when it's frozen, or not frozen, but really firm. Peel the silicone away from the sides, pull it apart, and then just gradually work that fondant out of that mold. It might take a, a couple tries to get it, but it does work. And then I just paneled the sides with the rosettes. Now we're gonna assemble the cake. I'm just using, um, normally I would use bubble tea straws, but I did not have any that were tall enough. I didn't realize that this cake was gonna be so tall. So I just used um, long skewers. Now this is not for an order, so I mean it would work, but if you were to do this for an order on that bottom tier, I would add probably three to five more if you're going to be using these skewers, just to be on the safe side. And I'm just adhering them with some buttercream. And then I did put a dowel straight through the middle just to make sure that it was doubly secure. And then I put it in to the refrigerator to set up while I prepared my rose for the front. This is another mold that I got on Timu. I got quite a few guys. We're gonna be doing a lot of molds here. <laughs> and I just, um, I, Conditioned the fondant with some shortening is what I did for all of these molds. Condition it with some shortening so that it has a little more elasticity and a little bit more playtime. And then I dusted this mold and I just worked the fondant into all the nooks and crannies. I find it's easier to work with smaller pieces or one piece kind of stretched out and place it bits at a time rather than putting a piece on there and trying to... Um, you know, use a roller and flatten it on and remove the excess. I like to do it th this way. And I did, um, I used that mold a few times. I made some more stems with it and, and another rose. I don't know what kind of flower that is, actually. I don't know if it's a, car or a rose or if it's a, a peony. Not quite sure, but I made a couple of them. And then I had these little buds. They're chocolate buds that I use another mold for. Um, and I added those on too. And then I put it in the refrigerator and let that firm up. And I had steamed that bottom tier with my clothing steamer. And that made it a little easier to get the um, fondant to stick. But don't add too much of the, the steam on there because then it doesn't want to stick. There's a kind of that in-between stage. If you think it's too wet, just let it sit for a couple minutes and dry out a little bit before you start ad adding your fondant. Then I'm just painting a little gold on my chocolate flowers. This is the same gold luster dust and Everclear combination that I usually use, and you can paint on chocolate with it also. And I did the centers of the smaller flowers, and then on the um, peony, I'm just kind of brushing the tips. Same with the uh, more 2D flowers that I have down there. Um, I just kind of use the brush and just kind of brush the top of those. And now that my flowers are stuck good on the front, I went in with some more of that paint, the gold paint combination of Everclear and Luster Dust like I always use. And I'm just kind of here and there adding gold. I did the stems, I did the bud, and I kind of touched the tips of the leaves and the flowers to tie it all together.
Okay, now we're gonna stick our flowers on the top. And I used, I just used buttercream, but honestly, you could use chocolate. That would work too, because you're sticking chocolate on something. You could use melted chocolate. Either way, whichever one works better for you. And then I'm just touching up some of these flowers with a little bit more gold. Sometimes you don't know exactly how much gold you want until you get it all together. And then I decided to add some to the rosette mold in the middle. Just to highlight those outside the, um, the tips of the flowers. And to just kind of emphasize that there's a pattern there because it's black on black on black. And I wanted to bring out those details a little bit more. And now we have our finished cake. I think this one turned out gorgeous and I'm very happy with the products that I used. And remember you can do this in any color combination you want. You could do a white on white. I almost did that, but I like the high contrast. So I decided to go white on black. So I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.